Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and in this video we're going to talk about Carrier Grade Network Address Translation, or CGNAT. And to kind of set the stage for this story, um, I just wanted to remind everybody that there is a proliferation of wireless and internet-enabled devices in the world today. I don't think I had to remind anybody of that, right? There's a lot of devices connected to the internet. And so there are a couple of different IP address types. There's IPv4, that's the old, you know, the older version, but then there's IPv6. Um, and as it turns out, the regional internet registries, the, the ones that hand out these IP addresses, they have completely exhausted all of their IP version 4 allocations, right? And so IPv6 adoption has finally taken off um, because frankly, a lot of the technology vendors and service providers are, uh, are supporting IPv6 now. They, they're kind of forced to, really, because uh, IPv4 is, is, uh, has run out. Um, so uh, given that IPv6 is, is being you know, adopted and it's, and it's, uh, it's taking off, uh, that's, that's one thing. But IPv4 uh, addresses and infrastructure and all that is still going to be around for a long time. It's not like IPv4 went away. It's just that those addresses are all used now, right? There's no new ones. Um, and so service providers are going to have to deal with this IP address translation and they need to make that transparent to the customers, right? So if I'm a customer and I'm holding my, you know, my mobile device and I need to go make that status update on social media, I don't really care if I have an IP version 4 or IP version 6 address, right? So I need the service providers to take care of that transparently to me, the customer. Um, but at the end of the day, the technology has to be there to do all of that work, all right? So... The service providers need a solution that's going to help them optimize these network operations, uh, optimize networks that have IPv4 and IPv6 addressed uh, traffic. So I want to draw a quick picture here for you. So let's say, uh, so here's, you know, I'm going to say like internet. So internet, and this is going to be IPv4. And you also have the internet, so iNet, and these are IPv6 uh, enabled, you know, internet capabilities. So here's, you know, all of that. So it's kind of a uh, kind of a picture of what's going on there. So internet IPv4 addresses and IPv6 addresses are going to be, you know, utilized by customers. Um, and then I'll just put the same thing down here. So you have like IPv4 and IPv6 um, applications. So I'll just put apps right here, right? And so customers are going to want to access their applications, access the internet, all of that. And so over here, of course, you have um, IPv4 and IPv6 customers or devices. So I'll just put, you know, uh, a few different devices here on each of those. These are just kind of representational of, you know, maybe it's a, a mobile phone or maybe a tablet or a laptop or, you know, whatever. Maybe it's your refrigerator or your toaster that's connected. Uh, everything's connected these days, right? So on one hand, you have, uh, you, have you know, mobile devices um, or mobile lines. And so I'll just put like a little, you know, tower kind of thing right here that's got the little radio thing. So this could be, you know, everything from 3G to 4G to the new super fast, awesome 5G networks, right? And then, um, so this is IPv4 and IPv6 running on this. And then also you have, uh, you know, like fixed lines. So, you know, I'll just, I'll just put, you know, fixed like land lines down here, right? Um, and so you have, you have traffic coming in, you know, from IPv4 and IPv6 all of this coming in and then they, they all want to access all of this stuff. So there needs to be something here that controls all of this. And so this is where the big IP, and I'll just put right here, big IP CGNAT technology comes in. So I'm just gonna put a big box right there. So this thing right here is gonna be able to do all of that translation and all of the, uh, all of the really technical necessary, you know, things that need to happen to make all of this stuff work, right? Uh, one of the things that I'm just going to go ahead and put up here is uh, this, and I'll just put logging, right? Because there's some amazing 
logging capabilities that Big IP CGNAT has. All right, so I just want to walk through a couple of the, uh, the capabilities of Big IP CGNAT. So uh, this, of course, manages IPv4 address depletion and IPv6 migration. So, you know, if you're a service provider, you can't just flip the switch and say we're not using version 4 anymore on IPv4 and we're only going to use v6. You have, to mi you have to migrate. You have to use them both at the same time. And so uh, Big IP CGNAT helps you with that migration. So it's, uh, it's going to manage secure IPv4 address depletion and IPv6 migration with a few or, or frankly several different capabilities. Uh, there's NAT 4.4. So NAT 4.4, Network, Adre Network Address Translation 4.4. It's a feature that extends the usage of IP version 4 um, addresses by translating private IPv4 addresses uh, that get allocated um, in the access network into public IPv4 addresses from a public IPv4 pool. So Big IP CG NAT does that NAT 4.4 feature. Um, there's also NAT 64 and DNS 64 or 64, uh, which frankly is, is the translation from uh, IPv6 to IP, IPv4 addresses, um, and then also DNS, because DNS will use, uh, will use IPv4 and IPv6 uh, addresses. So there's NAT64 and DNS64, and Big IP CG NAT does, does that. So it translates to and from 4 and 6, so it goes both ways, right? There's another thing called PBA, it's port block allocation, and this is a mode of CG NAT, Big IP CG NAT, um, it's a, it's a translation mode option that reduces CGNAT logging um, by only logging the allocation and release of each block of ports, right? So when a subscriber first establishes a network connection, then the Big IP system, Big IP CGNAT, is going to reserve a block of ports on a single IP address for that subscriber, and then the Big IP system is going to release the block when no more connections uh, are made using that block, right? And so what that does is that reduces the, the logging overhead because CGNAT only logs the allocation and release of each block of ports. So it's a really, uh, really cool feature, port block allocation. Uh, the, and then the last thing that I was going to mention really quick is port control protocol or PCP. And these uh, PCP clients can request specific NAT or CGNAT mappings for themselves uh, or for, uh, for third party, so and or third party devices. So themselves and third party or third party devices. So what this does is this allows PCP clients, port control protocol clients, to set their own public side IP addresses. Um, this is, this uh, could also be called translation addresses um, in a network that uses CGNAT, right? So uh, in cases where the big IP system or big IP CG NAT assigns a translation address or port other than the one that's requested, then at least the client is aware of their assigned address or port. So it's, a, again, really, really cool uh, feature of big IP CG NAT. So there's a lot more to this story of CG NAT, but I wanted to kind of set the stage here with some of the capabilities that big IP CG NAT provides and, uh, and stay tuned for more on this because this, uh, this gets really, really powerful and we want to kind of tell you the full story. But for now, I just want to say thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video with us today. If you like this thing, you can click up here on our DevCentral logo and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys out there in the community.